time to testify the goodness of Jesus Christ. Kanisa Shalom. Shalom. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jesus loves us very much. It is by the grace of God that I'm here today. Hallelujah. I am here in the temple of Jehovah Word, the God of Prophet Sanga. He is my God. Clap for Jesus Christ. I thank him. Yes. I praise him. I lift his name high. Hallelujah. For putting me through, for taking care of me and seeing me through lockdown. Lockdown because of COVID-19. I have lived abroad in different countries since 1970. I am 77 years old. Wow. Ana miaka sabina ngapi jamani? Eh? Sabina ngapi? Okay. Every year, I come back home to Tanzania to be with my family and my friends if I go back, except for 2021. I couldn't come because of lockdown. I left here in March, March the 10th, got home March the 11th, March 12th, which was a Monday, was lockdown. My children met me at the door and said, Mommy, you are not to get out of the house. At least for 12 weeks. And I live alone. The whole nation was overwhelmed with fear. Fear everywhere. And it was killing black people and old people. Between March and April, over 85,000 old people died in a very short time. Now, as you can see, I told you my age, I am old. I'm also black. And it was killing those people. So I was in great danger. My children were frightened. Mommy, you can't move. You can't leave the house. You are not allowed to touch anybody. Shaking somebody's hand is a death sentence. You are not supposed to come close to people. You have to have meter distance. People were greeting each other by the elbow or by the foot. And I was inside the house by myself, me, and the walls of my house, day and night. Twelve weeks passed. It carried on for six months. So from March to December, I was locked in with nobody else. And when it's winter, March, April, May, it is dark. The sun sets at half past two in the afternoon and it rises at eight o'clock in the morning. And if there's clouds, you don't see the sun at all. So it's dark most of the time and it's cold. So it was a great temptation to just stay in bed and cover myself and forget about the world. Because I'm not allowed to go out. You're not allowed to see anybody. My daughter, who lives about a distance as from here to Bagamoyo, would drive once a week with provisions from the supermarket. Everything was closed down. You couldn't travel anywhere. The shops were closed. The churches were closed. Everything was closed. Everybody was locked inside their homes. In the morning, about four, half past four in the morning, the phone will ring and remind me, stay home. 
wash hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your mouth. If you touch your face or your eyes or your mouth, wash your hands before you touch your eyes or your hands. Wash your hands. Stay home. So fear every day. And they're showing you the graph of people rising, so many dead, so many dead, so many dead, so many dead. They started building big holes to accept the people who have got COVID. If you've got a person who catches COVID, you'd take them to hospital, you'd leave them at the door, and you were told, go away, don't come back. And that person would be in the hospital by themselves, unable to breathe, and they would die by themselves. You are not allowed to go to the funeral, no weddings. It was that kind of difficulty. So in your head, you can imagine what is going on inside your head. So I thought, I'd just come from here. I was full of the energy of Jehovah Word. Because as soon as I got on the plane, I could see people coughing, wearing masks. I didn't have a mask. They were sneezing. And I'm saying I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes. And when I was inside the house by myself, my children said, don't turn off the phone, mommy because we want to talk to you every day to make sure you are alive. And I'm thinking, I want to turn off the phone because I don't want to hear the bad news that is coming through all the time. But I couldn't. I had to listen to all of it because everybody is registered with a um, family doctor. So they know your number. So they keep calling you. Stay home. Stay home. If your car is seen, it has traveled beyond the area where you live. Next morning, you receive a fine, 200 pounds at your door. So no movement whatsoever. All the cars were parked. All the planes were parked. No sports. No nothing. Just you and me with the walls of my house. So I had to find a way of covering the fear because every day they are showing you fear, fear, fear. You're going to die. You're going to die. But I saw daddy once because I, I, I have, um, I can have a YouTube channel on my television. It's a big screen. Okay. So I'd go there every day. And then one day I saw him. He was teaching about when you get up in the morning, first thing you must do is pray. So I'd set the alarm for seven o'clock. It would ring. I'd sit up in bed and I'd say, thank you God for another day. I can see your world. And I would start counting from the top. I would say, thank you God, my eyes can see. That is my miracle. Thank you, God, I can hear. I can still hear. I would count all the way. I can raise my hand and I can drop it. And by the time I got down to my feet and my toes, I felt like I had the energy of God in me. I am really healthy. And so I'd get out of bed and get washed and read a word. I would just ask Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray. I'm really new at reading the Bible. I was 73 years old before I held, held the Bible in my hand <laughs> and read it by myself. I went to church every day, or not every day, every Sunday for 73 years. But I never read the Bible. Other people read it and told me what it meant to them that it also meant that for me. So I am new at reading the Bible, but I ask the Holy Spirit, please show me a page that would help me through today. 
So I'd open that page, I would read it. Sometimes I'd get some inspiration and get about two words like, keep me loving. So the whole day, I'd be walking around the house, keep me loving, keep me loving, keep me loving, keep me loving. Or I would, sometimes I didn't understand what the word was telling me, so I would say the whole day, I'd walk around the house, Holy Spirit, pray for me. Holy Spirit, pray for me. Holy Spirit. So I, like that, I was trying to cover the fear, the fear words. So they give me fear, and I cover it with these words. So I was singing around like that. You know, so restore my peace. Restore the joy of my salvation. Restore my peace. I'd walk around like that. And then, of course, on Sunday, I would put on my YouTube channel. I'd go for Prophet Sangha sermons. And I would see you, all of you. Clap for Jesus Christ. <laughs> I would see you. And you would be cross together. You'd be praying. You'd be smiling. You didn't have masks. And we were being told you know, black people are going to die in Tanzania. Uh, they are having problems. The hospitals are overwhelmed. People are dying. They're hiding the corpse and burying them in the middle of the night in the Bahari Beach area. But when I saw you, you see, <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought, Satan, you are a liar. <laughs> because I can see my family praying. I can see everybody. So it would lift up my spirit. I'd be there all day. In the morning, I would go to Scorn. In the afternoon, I'd go to PUG. <laughs> And all that time, I didn't have fear in my heart, but there was fear in the head because it's feeding you every time. But like that, I went on every day, listening to the sermon, seeing you, and praying with you on that day. Even though it's not live, it would be like three days later, so I'd look like Wednesday, I would see you for the Sunday before. And then, the lockdown carried on. In, in December, we were allowed to meet one more person. So I could go outside and I could meet with my daughter at a meter distance. We can touch. We could walk together in the open air, not in the house. And then uh, a few months later, you were allowed to meet two other families, but only six people. Well, that carried on. December came. I was able to go to my daughter's house by that time. You know, that's six months. But then lockdown continued throughout um, 2021, January, February. It carried on, opening doors slowly, slowly being allowed to get out. Uh, but travel was impossible because then they discovered the vaccine for COVID. As you see me here, I've had three injections of COVID because I'm old. <laughs> so we got them first. And, and because of that, I was able to travel this time. It was difficult because you have to be um, Tested every time to see that you're clear of the virus. Tested at different places. It's very expensive to get tested because it must be private, not uh, national health. Um, but God opened all the doors for me. I was tested, I was clear, and I'm here today. And every 
glory, praise, na mchiangiria Jehovah work. Na inua jina lake juu sana for seeing me through because he's the one who cared for me. I had nobody. He was all, my only companion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mama anasema kwamba miaka yote nilipokuwa nje kila baada ya muda fulani nakuja nyumbani lakini sio mwaka uliopita alishindwa kwa sababu hakukuwa na ndege yote inayosafiri lakini kulikuwa kuna watu waliokuwa wametengwa Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana Kwa hiyo yeye sasa anamtukuza Jehova wewe anajua kabisa kwamba huyu ni yule Mungu anabisanga ambaye ameniweka huru mpaka leo pigie bwana Yesu makofi Labda mama e, ulikuwa katika nchi gani wewe na sasa umepata bahati ya kuja Tanzania najua kwamba e, viwanja mbalimbali vya ndege baba yetu akirua aliwahi kutoa prophecy akasema kwamba kitu ninachokiona huu ugonjwa unakwenda kwisha na maeneo mengi yatafunguliwa na tunashukuru Mungu hiyo prophecy imekuja kutokea kabisa kabisa. Wangapi walikuwepo kwenye hiyo prophecy wakati anatoa? Unaona watu wengi kabisa. Akasema kabisa, ninachokiona mambo mengi yatakwenda kurudi kawaida kabisa kama kawaida watu watanza kusafiri kutoka maeneo mbali. Na huyu mama ni ushuhuda amekuja. Prophets are the mouthpiece of God when they speak. God has spoken. Wakati wa ibada ya mkesha wa mwaka mpya mwaka 2021, mtumishi wa Mungu kama alivyoongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu alitoa ujumbe wa mwaka 2021. Na haya ndiyo mambo aliyosema. The name of this year It's a year of blessing. This is what Jehovah Word has sent me to tell you. That this year is a year of blessing for you, child of God. He said, The love of God is going to cover the world. He said, His mercy is going to be upon the nations. He said, Akasema, my people, watu wangu, they'll be traveling from one place to another place. Kati ya mambo saba aliyo ya taja, moja nilikuwa ni hizi. Everything in this world is going to come back no marry. Praise God, hallelujah. I mean, it's going to be no more corona in other nations. Manake kama ilivyokuwa mwaka juzi. Praise God hallelujah. Nasema mwaka huu kila kitu kinakwenda kurudi kama kawaida. This is a message of God. Huu ndio ujumbe wa Mungu for the whole world. Kwa ulimwengu mzima. Mwaka huu 2021, Ufaransa na Marekani wametangaza kuondoa vizuizi vya mikusanyiko vilivyowekwa kwa zaidi ya mwaka sasa. Deprived of their cafe terraces for most of the past 12 months, Parisians weren't letting pouring rain get in the way of what is hoped to be the beginning of the end of lockdown restriction. Parisians were finally able to enjoy their morning coffee and croissant in a cafe on Wednesday. Cafes and restaurants reopened to customers for the first time in six months as France gradually emerged from its third national lockdown in little more than a year. Tonight, the one-time COVID epicenter is breathing a little easier. It's really nice to be walking around on a beautiful day with no mask. It's awesome. Thanks God, we're going back to normal. Thanks God, we're going back to normal. We're going back to normal. Everything in this world is going to come back no marry. The bright lights of the big city are about to come back on. This is going to be the summer of New York City. We're all going to get to enjoy this city again, and people are going to flock here from all over the country to be a part of this amazing moment in New York City. 14 months after the nation's largest city was forced into hibernation, New York City is an insomniac once again. Tonight, restaurants, gyms, and theaters can operate at full capacity. Masks are no longer required for those who are fully vaccinated. And even the subway is running around the clock. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Mungu wa swadili. Asema mwakao kila kitu kinakuenda kuludi kama kawaida.
New York City is reopening after 14 months of coronavirus restrictions. The Big Apple is almost entirely back to business as usual, as bars, restaurants, gyms, and churches return to full capacity. Pia alisema haya kwa habari ya usafiri. He said, Atasema. My people, watu wangu, they'll be traveling from one place to another place. Watu kwa kisafiri kutoka sehemu moja kwenda sehemu nyingine. The international travel ban for England will start to be lifted slowly in 10 days' time. Portugal, Israel and Gibraltar are on a list of just 12 green countries that you will be able to travel to without quarantining on return. 12 countries and territories including Portugal, Gibraltar, Israel, Iceland, Singapore, Australia and New Zealand, anyone travelling from there to England won't need to quarantine from the 17th of May. But more is promised, just over the horizon. Caroline Davis, BBC News. Mungu akinena kwa kinyo cha nabii, hakika atalitimiza neno lake. Keep watching POG Family TV. Jesus Christ loves you. So, mama, una, 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 unaweza ukawa una neno la kutuambia kwamba umetokaje sasa wewe kwenye hiyo hali ulikuwa nayo, lakini pia, je, hili neno la unabii ambao baba yetu akiroa alitoa kwamba eh, mataifa mbalimbali maeneo mbalimbali mambo yatakuja kuwa katika hali ya kawaida je hizo nchi ambazo umezitoka sasa hivi zimekuwa zime, watu wamefunguliwa uhuru umepatikana kwenye lockdown i live in in uk in england actually yes um and I hear now that there will be no more lockdowns. I thought I wouldn't be able to come because in November there was a new version called Omicron. It was spreading like fire. They were thinking of locking people down again, but people are suffering because they haven't been working Rich people have become poor overnight because their businesses are dead. So um, advised if you go to the supermarket and you buy something, buy something for people who don't have anything to eat today because their businesses are dead and their children have no shoes or they can't heat the house. Um, but for Tanzania, you have to recognize how much God loves you. God loves us. God loves this nation. Because you made the right decision, the government made the right decision at the beginning and said we have to learn to live with this disease. But everybody else, there are so many countries, very few countries, so many locked down everything. So as you can imagine, no business is going on. And when there's no business is going on, nobody is earning. People, have, people are, are frightened even now, not because of the disease, but because of the results of lockdown. So Jesus loves Tanzania so much. You have to praise God every day, every time for being a person who lives here. Yeah, and also you have to, we are so lucky because we've got our lovely young daddy, Prophet Sanga. <laughs> God sent him to us. Just imagine, because he, when he prays, the prayer goes direct you know, to God. And you have somewhere to run to. You know. And there's trouble, there's somewhere to run to. So we have to pray for him. Pray for him. Anytime, every time. Pray for his family. Pray for his workers. Pray for his prayer warriors. Pray for his ministers, his evangelists, his praise teams, his media crew, everybody who is associated. Pray for each other. Because the enemy can come through anybody of us who becomes weak. So we have to keep praying and be very grateful that we've got a prophet who walks with the Holy Spirit.
Yeah. Be grateful to God every day, every morning you wake up. Say, thank God I live here. Yeah, because you're free. We were locked down. We were not free. But you were free. And you had a government that made good decisions, not based on fear, not based on what other people are doing. You know, independently, thinking independently and making independent decisions. So you have to be so grateful for that. And then be grateful because we've got the churches were open here, so you could pray. You could go and talk to God. Oh, the churches were closed over there. When they opened slightly, you had to make an appointment to go to church. And they counted, so many people can come today. The rest of you can't come. You know, so I think the main message is, don't forget how you, like you are. You are God's favor. It was God's real favor that you escaped. That you escaped. Because everybody else, uh, wherever it was, US, Japan, Italy, Germany, France, and some of those countries are still locking down people. Uh, so we are blessed in this country. We are very blessed. And so remember to say thank you every time. Every time you think you're going to complain about something, don't complain. Say thank you because you don't realize how lucky you are. You don't realize. No. And then don't forget to pray for each other. You know, I know we have all got problems. We bring our troubles to our prophet's feet. But when you do that, our enemies become his enemies. So the fight becomes stronger for him. So it's very important to keep praying for him. Pray for him anytime. Because the enemies don't sleep. They don't get tired. They are up in the middle of the night, up at midday, anytime. They are trying to stop him doing his work. So we have to pray for him because we bring our troubles to him so he can be a bridge to us, you know, to take them to God and resolve them. Uh, that is my main message. Pray for our prophet. Morning, day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be long prayer. It can be just one word. Just remember him. Cover him with the blood of Jesus so that it becomes his strength, you know, give him more light, more power, more love to share with us, you know, but at the same time, protect him from enemies who are there all the time, day and night, you know, and that is my main advice. <laughs> Mama, we thank you so much for your wonderful testimony. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank I love you. you. <laughs> thank you. Hallelujah. Keep watching POG Family TV. Jesus Christ loves you.